what's up what's up what's up i'm miles nanor and this is behind the stick bites in-depth dog training commentary this particular bite episode is about protection work for uh, or bite development for puppies and young dogs um so let's get right into it one thing you'll notice about uh my bite work for the or bite development for young dogs is i like to keep my work rhythmic and smooth um when i say rhythmic it's sort of belgian style right when i say belgian style i mean belgian ring if you look up a bunch of training videos for belgian ring or just competition videos you notice that the decoys have a lot of rhythm um and agitation that they give the dogs okay even in competition dog counters decoy will give in to that counter and then provide a very rhythmic uh, stick or some very rhythmic stick work. Okay, so they do that. They do that in competition. Uh, it helps the dog understand the opportunity that it has to counter. It helps build the dog because the dog doesn't have to predict just like randomly what's going on or when this is going to happen or when that's going to happen. Right? It presents a really good showing for for the dogs because they they have confidence in understanding what's happening. It also works a lot, very well because the handler, right, when I'm working protection work, um, knows exactly when their dog can counter, when they can set the line, etc., etc., um, which is important because protection work is a team sport, right? And I need the handler and I to be on the same page. And, you know, I travel the country, work with different people all over the place. And so we may not know each other. Right. Or maybe we do, but we still don't have that chemistry yet. Right. So that rhythm based work allows them and the dog to know exactly what's going on and, and gives us, you know, some pretty smooth training. Um, I like dogs and harnesses so that we can we can work on back pressure all the time, right? With that back pressure, we can facilitate pushing or pulling on the bike, right? It all depends on what somebody likes to see or what sport they play, etc., etc. Um, but I definitely believe that that's something that you can help build into a dog's program, right? Um, sort of in line with the Michael Ellis system. You know, I learned very early on the concept that, you know, use the harness as the gas pedal, okay? Use the collar as the brake. Um, I like that because I like my obedience to be sort of seamless and easy. I want pinky level finger control uh, with my obedience and my collar work, okay? So using the harness allows uh, that clarity and that black and white training between collar versus harness, gas pedal versus brake. So I, I really love that. I really love that. Um, also for ring sport, it's very beneficial because it allows the dog uh, head turns, right? The dog's t head needs to turn in ring sport because there's so much available for the dog to bite, right? Just depending on what makes itself presentable or presented. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I use harnesses for back pressure. I also use it so that the dog's heads can turn freely. Um, work in the beginning is rhythmic and smooth so the dog can predict what's happening so that the handler knows what's happening and so that we work seamlessly as a unit. Um, I like for dogs to possess the equipment, uh, just a little bit in the beginning stages of things only because... I want the dog to learn early on that they can fight when there's a fight, but when there's no fight, they can preserve their energy, but continue to clamp and bite nice and strong. That's very important to me. If you continue to work a dog in heightened drives and heightened states all the time, it gets really, really difficult for them um, to learn as quickly as you would want them to learn, right? When I say learn, learning is, it's deep, right? Especially in ring sport or, or in sport in general and competition, because sometimes you're looking for very specific lessons to be taught in a bike work session. You know, it's not just random bike work, just bite, be hard, be crazy, da, 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 da. You know, you need that dog sort of toned down a little bit and drive so that they can um, um, process some things. So, um, fight when you have to fight otherwise preserve your energy and just clamp bite hard 
Okay. Um, I would like to work with an imbalance as well. Uh, meaning if a dog has a proclivity to spit the equipment, I'm going to start working them in a way that makes them hold it more often. If a dog uh, holds it more often, I'm going to work them in a way that makes them spit it more often. Right. And uh, I'll take the extremes. And once I know my thresholds to create those extremes, I then know how to bring it back and create balance for the dog right there in the middle. So um, possession or spitting equipment all depends on the dog, but uh, we want balance in that for our work, right? Uh, especially sport work. Yeah, I think that's uh, sort of wraps up, you know, some of uh, my key points in puppy and young dog uh, development uh, for bite work. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.